Hello everyone and welcome to my weekly Coyotes chat. It's 2 p.m. Wednesday so that means it's time to talk some Coyotes hockey. Uh, the Coyotes are back in the Valley after playing last night in Denver against the Colorado Avalanche. They won 3-1 to one, and it wrapped up a somewhat quirky four-game road trip considering they were able to come home after the Western Canada part of the trip and get some rest and practice time in before concluding the trip last night in Colorado. And now they have two home games starting tomorrow night before they're back on the road, this time going to Eastern Canada um, and seeing the Canadian teams and then making a pit stop in Buffalo before returning home before Christmas. Um, lots of news of the day and I'm sure your questions will ask about that. So let's get started with our first one. This question comes from TS. Then Edman, how do you think Ryan Strom will play tomorrow night in his first NHL game at Jobbing.com Arena? Um, well, who is Ryan Strom? He is with the New York Islanders, and obviously the Coyotes are hosting the Islanders tomorrow. This is the start of a heavy Eastern Conference schedule, and Strom is a recent first-round pick. He was taken fifth overall in 2011, and this will be his NHL debut against the Coyotes. Um, he'd been leading the AHL in points, so um, obviously they're bringing him up with the expectation that he'll contribute offensively and um, they cleared a spot for, for him by putting Pierre-Marc Bouchard on waivers so there's probably some expectations but like with any rookie it's, it'll be interesting to see how he transitions into the game and gets his feet wet. I'm sure there'll be nerves so I wouldn't put too much of expectation on him to deliver a dazzling debut but um, he has the offensive history and it, it should be exciting to see um, the game tomorrow night and how it unravels. Our next question comes from Jack. If you could add one player from another team to the Coyotes, who would you add and why? Um, this is a really interesting question because I think um, in the past it probably would have been an offensive type forward, um, you know, to help really bolster the Coyotes' offense. And, um, you know, now looking at how they've been playing, it really seems like they, they need more attention maybe on their defense despite the, the pipeline um, that, you know, they uh, have with a lot of youth. We're seeing that on display right now with Connor Murphy and how well he's progressed into the lineup um, but I mean really you think of you know who are the best players in the game and you think of Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin and um, I guess you'd probably want to pick the best player overall to add to the team so I will actually pick neither and I will go out of the box a little bit and say Pavel Datsuk and I think that would probably be a player that would fit in nicely um, you know with the Coyotes group and maybe he's the fit on that Hansel Robota line and they'd make it work and he just seems like a very responsible two-way player that would fit with Tippett system and obviously he's one of the premier offensive skilled players in the league so I guess that's who I would add if that was actually possible. Okay, our next question comes from John Roberts. Can you give us any more detail on Shane Doan? Uh, the big news kind of that came out of today's optional practice is that Doan, it seems, will be out for the foreseeable future, according to Dave Tippett. He's still not feeling well under the weather, and he's still undergoing tests. Um, that's all the information that we have so far. It just doesn't sound like he's going to be available anytime soon. Uh, that's a huge loss, especially um, considering he's the captain leading goal scorer. He'd been off to a great start, so not only does it hurt a team to kind of rip out its heart and soul, but he was arguably one of their best forwards. So um, it's a tough blow, but as we saw last night, other players are picking up the slack. Two big goals from Antoine Vermet, who I would say has really picked up the most slack in Dome's absence, not only on the ice, but off the ice as a leader. And then you get a timely goal from the fourth line with Jordan Sports capitalizing. So this isn't new territory for the Coyotes. They're back to this all-for-one, one-for-all mentality and having everybody contribute. And, um, you know, the sum of the whole is greater than the individual parts. And it looks so right now that's how, how it's going to have to stand with um, no timetable really available on Doan's return. Okay, our next question comes from Guest. Hey Sarah, what is your take on Mike Smith's play so far this season? A lot of people want to see more of Grice, but my feeling is we're not winning anything without Smith and he needs to play through it. Um, well, obviously Smith wasn't able to go last night because of the flu bug. It, it got him and he remained in the dressing room and could have played, it sounded like, if he was needed, but it was just staying in there, not feeling well. He did skate today, so that's a good sign. So, um, you know, he is the number one goalie of this team. Whether fans like it or not, he is going to play the bulk of the games. And obviously Grice has penciled starts 
um, on his schedule. And then there's instances last night where he had to come in and play. But um, they are going to ride Mike Smith. They did not hand him a six-year contract worth, you know, thirty-four million dollars um, to sit him. He is their guy, and you know, I don't think necessarily he's been at his peak this season. But I think that's safe to say for everyone. I think a lot of how Smith plays is related to the play in front of him. And I don't think the defense has been as strong as it can be and should be, and I think that trickles down, but it also trickles the other way. I don't think Smith has robbed, you know, a game for the Coyotes yet this season. I don't think he's stolen two points, and that was something that I think fans got used to, um, maybe not last year, but the year before, particularly when he could stand on his head and they win. Um, so, you know, I think help obviously right now is bothering him a little bit, but I think a lot of it is just mental, and he has to get back to being confident, being back to the guy that I'm the guy, I need to stop the puck, and that's my job. And do I think he can get back to that level? Yes, but I think that it's been um, a struggle with the team trying to find their defensive identity that's very much tied to Smith. And so I think there's a lot of hockey left, and time will tell if he's able to you know, regain its, his step, just like we're looking for the defense to regain its step. Okay, next question. Um, it looks like the name is Glendale into bankruptcy, but I'm not sure. Interesting name. Today's article on Ice Arizona getting a bigger share of the 12-year, 5.2 billion NHL TV contract. Will the will the city of Glendale receive any of that revenue to offset giving Ice Arizona their 15 million arena management fee, since Ice Arizona promised 11 million in revenue would come back to the city? Obviously, today I wrote about um, the TV deal and how the ownership group felt about it. They were obviously very happy about this. This was a deal that was passed Monday at the Board of Governors meeting. And as far as I'm aware, the money going back to the city that we've been told so far is coming from naming rights, parking fees, ticket surcharges. So really, it seems like it's up to the ownership group, Ice Arizona, to decide where they want to pull those funds from um, to give back to the city of Glendale. Um, they haven't specified if they'll use the TV rights deal money that they receive as part of their share as one of 30 NHL teams. Um, obviously, the contract was coming up, but it was not talked about um, you know, when this deal was getting hashed out, at least publicly. Um, so really, I think it's up to the ICE Arizona to decide where they want to pull those funds from. Those are some of the sources that have been publicly announced parking naming rights, tickets, whether or not they want to pull from, you know, the revenue they get from um, the TV rights deal, it seems right. like it's up to them. Maybe it's a possibility, maybe it goes elsewhere, but um, they still have that responsibility, obviously, to, to give that money, and it seems like it's up to them wherever they want to pull it from. Okay, next question. Another question about Doan. This one comes from Bob. What's the vibe around the team regarding Doan? Feels like it's something more than just a regular illness. Us fans have a bad feeling about it. Um, you know, the vibe, I guess, has been as best as it can be. It's it's not really, I guess, talked about really. I mean, you get hear the questions, you know, you're dealing with so much adversity, you're missing so many guys, how are you, you know, soldiering on? But, um, you know, he. I don't think he's been around the team. He wasn't on the road trip to Colorado. I didn't see him at the ring today, so I'm guessing he must be just trying to stay home and rest up. So um, when he's not there it's probably easier just to kind of focus on the task at hand the practice the game whatever they're focusing on so uh, I know they missed his you know he leaves a big hole when he's gone but um, you know it, the mood has been as best as it can be I believe you know they, they believe that they're still very much in control of their destiny and they're trying to get their play right they're trying to rack up points and build off the win that they had last night in Colorado so I think they're just focused on the pieces that are here that they have available and, you know, trying to be positive and work through that and continue to find ways to win until Doan can rejoin them and they hope that they can continue winning with him. Okay, next question. Um, Fishburne. There was talk of New Year's Eve festivities at Westgate after the game. Any more info on that? Uh, the Coyotes are playing a New Year's Eve game um, at home. They host the Edmonton Oilers. Um, the last I heard, Westgate was still trying to um, get information about the events. It sounded like there was going to be parties at the restaurants and bars at Westgate, but it didn't seem like anything was finalized. So I would check the website and just kind of keep um, monitoring the Westgate news feed and what they announced. But um, it sounds like maybe individual businesses are, are offering um, specials or parties, but I don't know if there's a big um, block party plan that, that Fishburne mentioned in the past. 
Um, Amalek wants to know, hey Sarah, I just wanted to know, is there urge for GM John Maloney to make a move seeing how the Coyotes are playing lately? I think there, he always feels pressure to um, make this team better. He's always on the lookout. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think anything's imminent. I, I think if, you know, they were in a panic mode, we would have seen something by now. And, you know, they're not. They're very much in this hunt. They're, you know, in the pack of teams in the West fighting for a playoff spot. It's barely December. Um, so I think it's too early to make a knee-jerk reaction to try and shake this team up, but um, they can be better, they want to be better, and I know he's looking, but I don't think he feels um, the pressure to do something right now. I think he just always feels the pressure to make this team better, so he's constantly on the lookout for that. Question from George, what is Derek Morris dealing with and when will he back in the, be back in the lineup? All we know with Derek Morris, um, what the team is saying is that he is dealing with a family matter. But we did hear somewhat encouraging news today from Coach Dave Tippett. He said that it's possible Morris returns to the team Friday. Um, you know, so obviously um, that's good news for the team, getting him back. Um, you know, this has been an interesting year for Morris. He really has had a lot of success at times early in the season, putting up offensive of numbers, being a really strong, reliable defenseman, but then he's been injured, missed time, and I think coming back after that last injury, he struggled a little bit to kind of find his way again. So really up and down the year for him just trying to stay in the lineup, but when he has played overall, he's really cemented a valuable role for the Coyotes. Um... Common Yolt fan has a question. Will we see Klesla again this year? I, I think it's possible. Um, you know, I I think that this is good for him to go down and play and get a lot of minutes and really try and rectify his game. I think, like Morris, he's really been struggled to stay in the lineup with injuries. He had the concussion from the preseason, um, got hurt in that L.A. game uh, in October, and um, really has struggled, I think, to keep up you know, with those injuries in mind, he just kind of looked a step behind, and the Coyotes can't afford to have that. They expect him to be an anchor back there, so, um, you know, Portland's been playing a lot. Over the weekend, they had three games and three nights, so I think the opportunity down there will help him, and if he can get his game back to where the Coyotes think it could be, injuries always happen, trades happen, you never know. I think it is possible that we see him, because he's well-liked in the room. He's a good guy. It wasn't a knock on him personally, but it's just finding um, that level that he needs to be at and you know it didn't sound like any hard feelings when he was sent down so I do think it's possible we see him again playing for the Coyotes at some point this season. Um, question from Hamad, this is kind of an NHL type question, how would you eliminate incidents like the one from Boston Pittsburgh this past weekend? Do you think the code is an outdated concept? Um, obviously he's referring to um, the incident with Sean Thornton where he went after Brooks Orpik from a previous hit and punched him after the whistle and knocked him unconscious basically. Um, I, you know, I, I think fighting still has a place in this game. I'm a traditionalist and I, I don't like a lot of change to the game or I, I like it in small doses, I guess. And so I believe that, you know, that isn't an incident that should happen. I feel that you should be safe, you know, outside the whistles of the game. But, um, I, you know, as far as the code, I, I still think it can have a place in that, um, you know, there's honor and integrity in, in, in protecting your teammates and standing up for them. And I think, in a way, that helps the game police itself. If, if you know that if you hit somebody and, um, you know, there could be retribution coming back the other way. And, it, and I think that maybe helps clean up the game itself. But it's a very dicey issue. I think there's so much more attention on fighting with head injuries and concussions that maybe it does sometimes vanish just merely by health issue, but, um, you know, I think that incident is was inappropriate, obviously. You shouldn't just go after a player, um, but it goes back to that code and trying to protect your teammates, and, you know, you get people on both sides of the fence in that one, and, you know, I think fighting is such an essence of hockey. Um, people sign up playing the game knowing it's in part of it and um, you know I, I think most players when you talk to them they don't want to get rid of fighting they, they like what it represents they they like it in the game but um, we can't have incidents like that that's unfortunate that's scary um, so I think it's really up to the players to decide you know by their play what direction they'd like to see the game go this is our last question for today it's from junior needed when do you think Domi 
will be called up. Uh, I don't think we'll see Domi this season. Um, you know, maybe a late season call, but I think by then, if the Coyotes are playoff bound, they're pretty set with their lineup. Uh, I think that he will make a serious run at a roster spot at training camp next fall. He was very close to making, um, you know, grabbing a spot this season, but I think that they want to keep him in junior. It's unfortunate, I think, that the Coyotes, they think that, you know, he wasn't included in the World Junior um preliminary roster for Canada. I know that they were counting on him getting that experience, so I think that might be a little jolt that they didn't want to see for him and his development, but um, he still has the rest of the year in London with the Knights and the OHL, and I think we will see him back in the fall, but um, you know, he'd have to burn a year to, to come and, and play, and um, they, I don't think, want to take that step right now. Um, so thank you, everyone, for all the questions. Um, I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at EZC underscore McCullen for more Coyotes updates and follow EZC Sports for, for my Coyote stories. I'll also be talking on 12 News at 5 o'clock today for more Coyotes news, kind of the state of the team right now, where they're at with health, and a little bit more speculation maybe about that outdoor game. So try and tune in if you can, and we will see you back here next week. Thank <laughs> you.